In this video, I'm gonna show you how to replace the blend door actuator for the right-hand side, that being the passenger side of this Ford F-150, because we have dual climate control here. If you have single climate control, not a dual zone, it's going to be a different setup. And if you're looking for the driver side blend door, for that, you actually have to pull the dash away and remove your evaporator core and the heater core and all that. So that is a huge job. This video will show you how to replace the one that actuates the passenger side, which is located behind the radio, behind all of this trim. So let's get started. Right down here by the shifter area, you'll see the auxiliary port module. We're gonna have to pop this out with a trim tool from underneath. You can usually get under it and pry it out. Once you pop it out, disconnect it. There we go. Set that aside, leave these two over here because this is hiding a seven millimeter screw that we have to remove. Take that out and set it aside. Okay, that should be loose now. Looking up here, it's gonna be a little more difficult to see, but there is a rubber piece. Remove this, pry it up and off, and there are two more seven millimeter screws up on top. Remove both of these. They're all the same, so you don't have to worry about mixing them up. At this point, you're gonna to wanna to pop out these two trim pieces on the side that have the vents on them. And uh, that is because the radial bezel actually goes behind them. Try to stick a trim tool back here and without breaking anything. Looks like I need a little stronger of a trim tool. There we go. They just snap in and you don't have to remove them. You just have to pull them away. Do the same over here. With that pulled away, you should be able to pull the radio module out. There we go. Behind it, you'll see two connectors at the top, a black connector, unplug that, and a gray connector over here, unplug that as well. Down there on the side, towards the uh, passenger side, you'll see that one with the multicolored wires. Unplug this one as well. Okay, and that leaves us with the HVAC connectors right there, the uh, brown one and the gray one. There's one, there's the other. Last but not least, the 12 volt outlet. Okay, now you can grab this, pull the wires out and set this aside. This leads us to the CD changer. This is a six disc CD changer. If you have a single disc, it might look a little bit different, but this one has four seven millimeter screws, one on each corner. Take all of them out. All of these are also the same as the ones we took out prior. So once again, no need to keep them separate. They are all the same. With this out, you should be able to pull it away. And once you pull this away, you can just set it down. And with that set aside, you can see the actuator that we're after right in there. Now you can take an eight millimeter socket or wrench and remove this screw right here. All right, grab this one. There's one more on the back side right there. Now, unfortunately, I have some bad news and that is that you will need somewhat of a special tool to get to that rear bolt or screw, I guess it would be. I made this from a quarter inch impact driver socket. It's an eight millimeter or well, it's a 5 16 but it's the same size. And this is being driven by a quarter inch ratcheting wrench. That is the only way that I'm gonna be able to get back there and actually remove that screw. You can also reach in through the glove box if you pull the glove box down. But the problem is what you're gonna be fighting is the distance between this actuator or the screw itself and the bottom of this dash support here. With this though, I can go in like this, bed it right down on that screw and unthread it. 
At this point, I can spin it by hand. I'm gonna have to block your view for a second here. Okay, there it is. Okay, now we can pull this up and off of here. You can't go very far with the harness, but if you just reach your fingers in there, you should be able to disconnect it. There's a red locking tab right behind there. I'm just gonna use this trim tool to pry it away. And once that's pried away, you just stick your hand back here, push the tab down, hard to see. I can't even see it. Make sure you don't lose the wire back there. And here is the actuator that we are after. Perfect. Let's get the new actuator in. I'm gonna try and line it up over here and set it down. Basically you have to line up the splines up and then it should fall into place. There we go. That's it right there. It's not quite where it should be. So I'll just spin it around. And uh, once we connect it, we should be able to push it down all the way. There we go. Now the tricky part is connecting it because it's all the way back there, but you can't really pull the harness out more than this. You can't really see what's happening, but if you feel for it, you should feel it fall into place eventually. Move it around enough. Oh, there we go. I just plugged it in. Don't forget to lock that locking tab in, the red one. Press it on. That's locked in. Now we just have to put in the two mounting screws. As you can see, it drops down. That's perfect. I'm going to put on this front one first because it's easier to reach and doing this will ensure that this stays in place. Okay, snugged, that's it. Not more than an eighth of a turn after it's bottomed out because you don't want that to strip out. Now comes the more difficult part, which is putting in the bolt in the rear. It is basically impossible for me to show you what I'm doing because I can't even see, but it's almost bottomed out. Okay, that should be tight enough. It's snugged up, that's all we need. Now let's get things back together. Put the CD changer back in here. It has a couple pins that it needs to line up with. One over here, one over here, and one all the way in the back. And uh, if you just wiggle it around enough, it should basically fall right back into place. Start the four screws back in and tighten them up. Now let's bring this panel in here and reconnect everything on the back side. I'm going to start with what I ended and that was the 12 volt plug. Snap that back into place. I had a brown connector over here that plugged into the HVAC controls and then the gray one on the gray connector. Make sure they click into place. There we go. At the bottom, this was the auxiliary cable and then uh, this plug over here. This also needs to slide through the opening for it. There we go. On the passenger side, there was this plug. Connect that back up. And at the top, the gray wire went on the black connector. And this was for the controls towards the passenger side. And over here. Make sure those click. Resituate this panel here. Make sure these wires poke through the bottom. Now you have to pull these out so you can set this panel behind them. There we go. Press it in, snap these back. There we go. I'm going to start with the two screws up top. nice and snug and don't forget to put back this rubber piece to hide the screws make sure it gets tucked underneath that way it has a nice flush mount here at this point we should only have one screw left which is the one that goes right down here 
nice and snug. Let's reconnect the two connectors here. There was this plug for the auxiliary port and then the USB plug that just slides into its retainer here. And then slide this back in. Should snap into place. And there we go. And at this point, the job is done. Just go ahead and test out the motor if you haven't already. Make sure everything works as it should. And off you go. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.